You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing before maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. We believe in the American way And we built this country called the USA And we fly our flag cause we're proud and free We're Americans Red, white, and blue is our way of life we never back down from a challenge or a fight Nature provides, God gives the rights We're Americans We fish the waters and we hunt the lands We force the steel with our own two hands we do the best we can, we're Americans. It's time now for the Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show on K98 Talk. Now, here's Grouchy. Good evening, everybody. How you doing tonight? Sorry we're running a little late. Sorry we're running a lot late. But anyway, uh, we, we, uh, 
you know, when your producer goes MIA on you, 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 you just scramble until you find uh, another producer. And I, I want to thank Jess for uh, actually pulling the last second hitch and getting us live on the air here tonight. You're welcome, uh, Jay. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be uh, joined by, uh, by a guest that's going to be uh, talking with us about a, a new political movement that's getting underway that uh, sounds interesting and I think we need to discuss because... Uh, I think over the next four years, you're probably going to hear a whole lot more about it um, and might as well get in on the ground floor here. Uh, so we got that coming up in just a little bit uh, when he calls in. But we're going to roll tonight's show with uh, election fallout, man. I mean, you know, it's the day after the election and uh, who, who thunk it? Trump won. Trump won. That may make some people happy. That may make some people sad. That may turn your stomach. Um, kind of does all three for me. But there are some people that just took it to an epic level of stupid. And I want to talk about them to start with. So here's our first one. John Stewart formerly of The Daily Show. Jon Stewart said, if Trump wins, I'm getting in a rocket and going to another planet because clearly this planet's gone bonkers. Number one, glad to know the whole planet voted for Trump. Um, right, John? Uh, secondly, if you're going to get in a rocket and go to another planet, uh, I will pay somebody to not give you a helmet to wear. Next up, stupid person number two, Chelsea Handler. She said, all these people that threaten to leave the country and then don't, I'll actually leave the country if that guy wins. Chelsea, don't let it hit you where the good Lord split you. Next up, Miley Cyrus said, I'm going to move out the country if Trump wins. Out the country. Because she's all cool. Nev Campbell threatened to move back to Canada. A <laughs> huge loss there, right? Uh, Lena Dunham said, I love Canada. I think it's a great place. And there's an area in Vancouver that I found uh, that's beautiful and appealing, and I can conduct business of molesting other people's little sisters from there. Well, okay, I added the last part, but anyway, Lena Dunham, hit the bricks. Cher said she was moving to Jupiter if Trump won. Maybe she can hitch a ride with Jon Stewart in the helmetless rocket ship. The brilliant one, the brilliant one, Al Sharpton, oh yeah. He said, I'm reserving my ticket out of here now if he wins. <coughs> Only because he'd probably have me deported anyhow. Hey, Al, you can't deport American citizens. Next up, Spike Lee promised to leave. Go, brother, go. Barbara Streisand promised to move to either Australia or Canada. Uh, quite frankly, the Aussies would hate having her, but the further away she can get, the better. Amy Schumer said, My act will have to change because I will need to learn to speak Spanish because I will move to Spain or somewhere. It's beyond my comprehension that Trump could win. I didn't know they spoke Spanish in somewhere, but good luck, Amy. Samuel L. Jackson. I have to PG-13 this one, folks, because he got a little crazy on me. Um, he said, if that mf -er wins, uh, I'm moving my black ass to South Africa. Hey, Sam, got your bags packed? Hope you got your passport, and that's what's in your wallet. 
Uh, Natasha Leone, whoever the hell she is, threatened to leave. Uh, George Lopez, if he wins, he won't have to worry about immigration. We'll all go back. And the, the brilliance of Raven Simone. Yes, everybody remembers this classic. She promised to move to Canada if, quote, any Republican gets nominated. She should be gone already. Whoopi Goldberg said, maybe it's time for me to move. I can afford to go, you know. And then Brian Cranston, I would definitely move. Uh, it's not real to me that that would ever happen. I hope to God it won't. People, check this out, people. Why is it always the leftists, the socialist types, the communist types, the people that want to tell you what's best for you, the people that want you to pay more in taxes, but don't touch their money. Why is it always them that are threatening to leave our country? Why can't they learn to cope as an American? They lived through eight years of Bush. We lived through eight years of Obama. Now they have to suffer through a minimum of four years of Trump. Guess what? It's a freaking cycle. It's a political cycle. That's why they call it that, people. This is how a democracy operates. We vote. Somebody wins. Somebody loses. This is the way our republic was set up. We built a republic to practice democracy. Get it? No, you don't get it. Too stupid. Got your head wedged up in places it shouldn't be. Like these idiots out on the streets of Chicago protesting right now, shutting down traffic, screaming, not our president, not our president. Guess what? He literally, literally, on January 20th, will be your president, my president, our president. Deal with it. There's a lot of people on the right that aren't real thrilled about it either. They're going to have to deal with it too. We're all going to live. That's the upside. Just think. All these people on the left screaming on the uh, not my president hashtag today. I, I was catching bits and pieces of it, uh, you know, in, in quick blurbs at work. Uh, I mean, some of these people are just absolutely ludicrous. Ludicrous. And the thought process that's going on in their head is just amazing to me. Yeah, I, I saw one tweet. Somebody said, dear God, Somebody use a sniper rifle and take him out. Are you serious? <coughs> I don't care what party somebody's in. I don't care what they claim to be, Republican, Democrat, conservative, libertarian, whatever. It doesn't matter. I would never, never advocate for the killing of another human being over politics. And the fact that somebody's out there, I, I, one of the other ones on that thread, that, uh, that hashtag said, cannot believe how many millions of lives are just now destroyed, not my president. I wonder if they would be as open-minded to accepting that had Hillary won and somebody tweeted that. No, then you'd hear about what a racist or a sexist you are because that's how they operate. It's their way or the highway on the left. 
I saw one guy saying that there, there were Klansmen parading in the streets celebrating. I asked for photos because, first of all, I didn't believe it. Um, now, could it have happened? Sure, it could have happened. Uh, Trump, even though he said the words that he didn't want that kind of support at one time during his campaign, um, that support is still at the very root of his campaign. Uh, it, it's the very root of his support, and I hope it does not get into the influencing of his policies. Because to me, those people are as disgusting as anybody that on the left that would call for shooting Donald Trump. And as somebody who is, uh, uh, I'm not somebody that the Klan would really enjoy being around. Um, those of you that have listened for a while, you know I'm half white. Um, but I'll tell you this. I would rather stand in between two hooded Klansmen than two plainclothes white guys any day of the week. The Klansmen, at least I know where they're coming from. I know I have to watch my back. The other guys, you know, whether they're white, they are. I would much rather know where they're coming from. Anyway, um, enough of that junk. I, I do believe that our guest is online now. Am I right? Maybe. Uh, no, he dropped off. I'm working to get him back. Give me just oh. a moment. Okay, no problem. I, I thought I heard his voice, but you know, things do happen. We'll get it. We'll get it going here in a minute. And uh, when we do, we'll uh, we'll go live with our guest. And hey. uh, we're gonna. And I think Dan, we have do we him. have you on the line? Yes. All right, hey, brother. I just hey, what's going on, G? grabbed the other account and made it work. That sounds like a winner. Look at here, we might we might have to just get forwarded Jesse to an automated voice messaging system. I'm sorry, sorry. What was that? I didn't realize there was another I'm number that unavailable. got called. Hang on a second. Okay. <laughs> I may have to do a little quick reconfiguration here. <laughs> All right, we're good for now. Okay, we're good for now. So, we are joined by my friend. It's all good tonight, brother? Oh, yeah. How you doing? So, uh, how do you, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to out you here on air, uh, unjustly or anything like that. So, uh, what do you, what do you want to, what do you want to be tonight on air? Oh, Dan, Dan Wright. Uh, and you, it is. You can, you can out me. Yep. Dan Wright, it is. Okay. Dan Wright, Dan Wright. <laughs> so, how's it going tonight besides scrambling? Oh, man, we're good now. Uh, Jesse's got us hooked up. Everything's rolling like a, like a tricycle now. Uh, hey, at least I managed to find your intro, find the ad roll, oh, get man, you on the was, air. She was all over the board, man. She handled it. And pulled you know, the and I pulled Dan in. And you pulled Dan in. <laughs> now if we can just get you to Club Rick over the head, we'll have the trifecta. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm doing that too from the I'm texting him from my phone, so at least we know he's safe, so that's good. We do, because I had heard everything's good. Yeah, yeah, everything's good. He finally made contact. All's he, good. He was just spending some time with the family because they haven't seen a lot of him lately and he lost uh, track of time. That's right. That's all good. As long well, as he's not a, good a car wreck or something. After the last, after the last couple of weeks, that's that's good. I'm glad he's spending some time with the family. Absolutely. I, I got to admit, if uh, my spouse wasn't on a field training exercise and not home, I'd probably be bailing on tonight's show myself. But he's not here, so it kind of doesn't matter. There you go. <laughs> it kind of doesn't, does it? No. There's always more important things. I don't think the cats really care as long as they get dindins. That's right. You know, they're off curled up doing whatever, you know, kitty napping or whatever. 
Well, I will butt out and let you two continue your conversation without me. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All right. I, so well, Jason, I didn't even uh, I didn't even get uh, get a chance to listen to your your intro. Uh, how did you open the show today, G? Uh, with Madison Rising, of course. Well, I knew that. <laughs> I didn't know if uh, I, I'm I'm just I didn't know if you you did a monologue or not. Oh no, I uh, I actually opened up on all the uh, stupid leftist celebrities that are promising to leave the country over Trump winning. Yeah. yeah, I hope so. Yeah, uh, you they know, won't. Samuel they L. won't. Jackson. They, you know why they won't? Because of two things: money and freedom. Yeah, exactly. And that's it's what I all, said. It's, it's, always, all it's always the wealthy it, leftists that want to tell us what's best for us and how to spend our money and why we should pay more taxes while they don't. Right. And yeah, it's it's the the oh I've I've been watching it on I've been laughing a lot today actually I thought today was going to end up being very depressing, um, on social media and watching news and everything else. I, it, it's actually, you know, this morning I, I I was able to get a late start this morning, so I kind of hung out and lucky you went and surfed surfed through. Well, you know. Since I don't actually take days off occasionally, I'll just tell them I'm coming in late. But I sat there and surfed through CNN and MSNBC. They're losing their minds. Oh, yeah. They are losing their minds. That is not breaking news. No. No. But I mean, they, they lost their minds news. a long time ago, but they're, they're visibly losing their minds. And, yeah. you know, you know, I'm not I, – I wasn't a Trump supporter. I'm not right. a Trump supporter. Hey, he's he's the president elect now. I mean, it, it is what it is. Up and help. Yeah, it it is what it is, and we can't do anything about it. I mean, I, I hope that you know. I didn't think he'd win. I hope he keeps proving me wrong. That's yeah. what I hope. Yeah, I get it. But in the interim, Dan, um, you you tweeted out something that's interesting to me. Um, you are, uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming you are anyway. I brought you on to talk about this. Uh, you, you are apparently uh, part of the ground floor of this federalist movement. Well, it's, yes, um, there, there's, there's a couple little different things going on. I mean... We, we started, I started talking with a group of people about six months ago, and we put together a grassroots group called the Federalist Coalition. Um, we, we officially launched it today. We, we put together um, a platform. I mean, we spent months putting together a platform. I, I wasn't, I mean, I'll admit, I, I wasn't... I was involved, but there are some people in this group that are just amazing. And we put together a platform. We have, you know, a platform on everything you could think of. And it's, it's based on a modernized Federalist Papers and the Constitution is what our platform is. And, and what our goal is, is to support and work with other people to move forward with hopefully having a viable party, if not by 2018, by 2020. Um, We are talking to people like J.D. Rucker, who is actually starting a party. And it looks like we're, you know, we're talking to him and and we're we're maybe going to back him and and help him. Um, And just coincidentally, He's starting the Federalist Party. Um, the, the, the two names were really, you know, the names being the same were kind of a coincidence. Um, but I, I'm really excited about it. Uh, you know, we have some very motivated people, and we want people to come in and join. You can you can join our movement. Um, and it's, it's a movement to bust up this two-party system. And, and it's looking like, like Mr. Rucker... Um, 
he has money and he has backers and he does not want career politicians. Um, he, he wants fresh faces and, and, and that's the way we need to move. And we're hoping that it, in the least, we're hoping that everything starts shaking people up in Congress and the Senate and the president. You know, we're, we're hoping that, that groups like us, along with J.D. and his party and other groups jumping in and backing him, we're hoping we can really shake things up. Because I, I really believe that it needs to be shook up. I, well, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and I like the sound of that. Um, tell me we're going to uh, take literal literal steps here to try to move this uh, back towards the old school Federalist Party like Jefferson was, right? Correct. Um, and, and, you know, we, it's, 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 we're, what we're trying to do is, is work on accomplishing something that the Libertarian Party has completely failed at. Um, and that's moving towards small government, moving towards you know, you see it in my bio, moving towards classical liberalism, which is, you know, the the, the term liberal is so misused. Oh, um, yeah, it was hijacked. Conservatives really are liberals. You know, we're for individual freedom. That's what the word is supposed to mean. And that's what we're about. We, we want individual freedom, states' rights, and the Constitution. We want the country to be constitutional like it should be, which it's moving away from. You know, there are so many unconstitutional laws on the books, and it's hard to reverse laws, but they keep getting made. The, the Constitution keeps getting shredded, and it has to stop. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And I, I like the sound of that, Dan. You're going to have to definitely keep me in the loop on that. Uh, join. Got to poke my in nose in here and say I like the sound of it too. Good deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's and it's it, you know we're the the group. It's made up of you know everyone from a, a couple lawyers all the way down to you know uh, blue collar people. You know we have a group and and we all have the same. Ideals. We, we, when we built this platform, we voted on it. Every article in our platform was voted on by the group. And not everybody necessarily always agreed on everything, but we always agreed to agree. You know, we, we spent a lot of time putting this together. And, and I think it, I'm really excited for it. I think, I think people are really going to, to, to grasp it, you know, and I've been trying to put it out there for, a couple weeks now, and now that we're officially launched, and when we are incorporated, we're we're a 501 4C, which also gives us the ability to lobby. Um, I, I'm, like I said, I'm just really excited about it. It, it. A lot of hard work went into it. I, I won't I won't say that I was the harder hardest worker on it, but I, I put in what I could. But there were some very 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 hardworking people that put a lot of time into this and, and we're very excited about it. I, I tell you, I like the sound of it already. Um, tell us where we join up, Dan. Well, it's the federalist coalition.com. Go there. You can check out the website and we'll, we'll have tiers of membership. Um, and, and every, it, it doesn't matter where you are as a member um, you, your, your input is, is, is considered where we, we want people to come in and, and give their input and give their ideas. We, you know, what, what I think that conservatives have gotten away from is that we've always been good at talking to each other. And even when we disagree with each other. We're, we're good at finding common ground, and I don't mean common ground towards the liberal side. I just use the word liberal, like I said, I don't like to do. But right. what we're, 
what we've we've been able to do in this group of of about sixteen to eighteen of us is sit here for six months and bounce ideas off of each other. We don't always agree, you know. We we didn't just do it by text or in groups, you know, chat groups. We once a week we had a phone call and we were a conference call. We were all on the conference call and we bounced ideas off. We didn't all always agree with everything, but we talked about it. And that's how we came up with our platforms. And if you go on there and read it, you, you almost, it almost reads like a modern day federalist papers. It really does. And I like that. you know, yeah. And, and like I said, I'm just excited about it. I'm, I'm, you know, it was, it, it's been a long time that we've been putting this together. I mean, maybe not a long time. And, you know, I, I think we, we had to scramble a little bit, but, you know, five, six months. Um, and, and, and I just, I got invited into it out of the blue and I've made some really good friends and met some really great people and, it's ready and it's it's out there well there you go folks something to think about um and oh and, and you know i i left somebody off the list that threatened to leave the country uh and this actually works as a benefit to trump if she'll stand by her word i think um because ruth bader ginsburg said she would move to new zealand if trump won oh wow yeah so we got a Supreme Court justice talking about vacating for President Trump. That's, that, would make, that would make two picks right off the bat for him. Hey, guys. Yeah, would. Guys, sorry to interrupt yep. the fantastic conversation, but we are past the bottom of the hour, and you guys know what that means. Bill time. Gotta pay those bills. So... I believe we will see you on the other side. All right. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing before maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. 
With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. All right. Welcome back, everybody. We are uh, still sitting here. Uh, hey, Seymour got some glass broke for us. How about that? <laughs> okay. is, is that Seymour's comment on the election? Uh, yeah, well. Uh, anyway, uh, we've been uh, discussing election fallout during the break. And, uh, you know, we're still here with uh, with my friend Dan. And uh, Jesse's still with us, too. And... I found something this morning uh, that I really thought was pretty good, uh, and it's it's an article that was written by a Chinese newspaper. And uh, if you can if you can bear with me here, they were talking about how Hillary managed to lose an election to a candidate as divisive and unpopular as Donald Trump. They, they went on to say that this will baffle observers and agonize Democrats for years to come. Once the shockwave passes, glimpses of rational explanation may become visible. They went on, you know, the, the, the simple logic here. Incumbent parties rarely hold on to power after eight years in office. H.W. was the exception following Reagan. Uh, they talk about how the pendulum swings and... Blah, blah, blah. Trump's defiance of expectations, they said, has itself also become somewhat of a golden rule in American politics. Written off repeatedly during the Republican primary and only rarely taken seriously during the general election, he nonetheless epitomizes the same anti-establishment mood that led Britain to vote to leave the EU. And Democrats in 22 U.S. states to nominate Bernie Sanders. Fairly or not, it's an establishment with which Clinton could not have been more closely aligned in the minds of the voters. Not bad. Wow. That's no, China looking not at bad. us. And, you know, I, it, you know, it starts with, with the whole thing of how could she have lost to somebody as divisive and blah, blah, blah as Trump? Well, you know, I, you know, I'm not a WikiLeaks fan. I do not like Assange, but I really think he pushed her over. And, and it's because, I mean, I knew how bad she was. You knew how bad she was. Yeah, but a lot of people out there don't pay attention. They really don't. No, I mean, I don't. guarantee you, you could go out there and you could find people that have never heard of Benghazi. Because they and, don't pay attention. They don't watch the news. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And, I mean, the other thing, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll add a little bit to, to what they noticed in China. Um, it goes back to... Uh, 1992, when James Carville said, it's the economy, stupid. Man, 
do you know how bad Obamacare is hurting the economy? Oh, it's killing it. People have less money in their pockets. And by God, if there's ever something to stand up and vote for or against, it's what ends up in your pocket after your paycheck comes in. Am I right? You're right. In, in the last eight years, I, my company has given me raises. I have not received a raise. I literally make, I literally bring home the same amount of money now that I did eight years ago. Because every time I get a raise, either my taxes go up or my right. health care went up. Of course. And I have, I have, I have $40,000 in medical bills sitting on my desk. Would you like to know? $40,000. Would you like to know North Korea's take on the election? I happen to have pulled it earlier. <laughs> Oh, sure. I know they held some secret meetings today, but yeah, what what do they have to say? The KCNA described the current presidential election as the most dirty to-and-fro conflict and goes on to say neither candidate can protect the country from destruction. And also, uh, North Korea declares Obama's presidency as a completely failed regime which will be placed in the cesspool of history. Well, there you go. Hey, I agree with North Korea on that. I mean, sometimes it's really interesting catching these international takes, even from places where the average citizen, as we I played the clip for you last night, has never heard of Trump or Hillary. There you go. And, and what I'm wondering is who is it they think is going to destroy us? Certainly they don't think they're going to uh, ICBM us from North Korea. Oh, Kim Jong Un said, you know, thinks he he can blow us, you know, reduce us to rubble and ashes. I mean, the whole article it's from official Korean news source, so oh, I'm not so even going to read. It, they printed it. Yeah, I'm not even <laughs> going to read the vast amounts of propaganda sprinkled throughout here. Okay, we're just going to leave okay. all that rhetoric out, ladies and gentlemen. Well, did, we did, did, did. <laughs> yes, not owned. Did, we've been did, owned. Did. Did, did either of you see um, the little gift left on the steps of the U.S. Embassy in Russia today, in Moscow? I did not. It was a bouquet of flowers with yeah. a note that said, Je suis USA. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. What, what, what does that mean? What does that, does that mean... Well, does that mean um, that, you know, welcome to having a tyrannical leader? Or does that mean you're screwed? What does it mean? I'm uh, I don't not know. sure. Is it, is it any worse than Obama saying that if you want to be an American, you're an American? Or encouraging illegals to vote? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's It, it just, uh, I saw that this morning and I was like, wow, that's... Kind of strange. I mean, some embassy worker, U.S. embassy worker in, in in Russia walked up to unlock the doors this morning and saw this sitting on the front steps. Well, there you go. So, um, you know, one of the other interesting little tidbits that uh, fell out today, uh, Josh Ernest, during a briefing at the White House, said that they are not ruling out the possibility of Hillary Clinton receiving a last-minute pardon from President Obama, even though she hasn't been charged with a crime. And Yeah, when a, pre, a, preempted, a preemptive pardon. Does that go, work? Go back to 74. This is Ford Nixon now, okay? Uh, Nixon, at this point, was pardoned by Ford... And the verbiage states that it was for any crimes he might have committed against the United States while he was president. Kind of a preemptive wipe the slate, get out of jail free card. That is a disgusting thought. The precedent has already been set. By the GOP. 
Yes, it has apparently. Um, yep. But you know what? What transpired with Watergate was nothing compared oh, to what Hillary has done. I agree. And Ford's justification, he said that he made this decision by claiming that a long, drawn-out trial would have only further polarized the nation. That was his justification. <laughs> that, I mean, you know, it, 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 it would make sense if he did it because they're still investigating the Clinton Foundation. I mean... It that you know the 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 email investigation may be over, but they right. are investigating the Clinton Foundation. Right, that would be but, more along the but lines. But that of doesn't the that pardon will not excuse Bill. Maybe they no. can put Bill in prison. Right. Well, he'll pardon all of them. You watch because Bill, Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea are all named as you know the chairs of the foundation. So it would have to include all of them, or it would be useless. Right. It's like I'm sitting here stressing out, waiting for my oldest daughter one day to tell me she's getting married and I have to come up with 10, 15, 20 grand for a wedding. And they just used, you know, foundation money for Chelsea's million dollar wedding. Uh, it was five and a half million dollar wedding. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, Dan. Mm hmm. I planned a wedding in 18 days, and for less than, uh, probably less than five five grand, and that was doing it on short notice, and that included no more than three hundred dollars for my dress, including alterations. Do you know? Do you know? You want to know how I got married? Courthouse. I got married at the courthouse, holding my son that was already born, and with my adopted daughter who was standing in between us. The Justice of the Peace married us and we went to my ex-wife's grandmother's house and had grilled cheese and SpaghettiOs and then I went to work. That was my wedding day. Well, uh, my second husband and I did something similar for legal but then we always promised all of our friends and family we'd do the big religious ceremony and so I planned an entire Jewish wedding in 18 days. Oy vey. That's what... <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. 18 days. You know, we, we just never... She had the big wedding with her first marriage, and, and she didn't want it. And to be honest with you, for tax reasons, we had to be married before the first of the year, and we got married on December 23rd. Wow. Well, there was no tax was, reasons for us. It was just working around U.S. Army schedules, my schedules, family schedules, friends' schedules. We were working around 30 different people's schedules. I managed to get everybody to the right place and the right time on the right day and plan the whole wedding in 18 days. Boom. Now that's an efficiency expert. What can I say? Yeah, but I've, I've, I've already been told by both my daughters that they want big weddings. All right. Well, go ahead on, Dad. Yeah. Hmm. Ouch. You can, always, That's... Uh, you can always mortgage the boots. Yes. That's it. <laughs> hey, look, guys. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna. Like I'm gonna line up all like... the uh, boots and and send a picture to the bank and see what they'll give me. There you go. Hey, guys, we're getting real tight on the bottom of the hour. And Jess, I know you said go 35, but let's just nip it at 30, and that way it kind of keeps the the time frame a little smoother. I'm looking at the clock. You have been on. You have a, right around ten minutes left, so you're good. So I'm good. Okay. You well, got we ten more minutes 10 to. Minutes. You you got ten minutes to make it an hour. Well, we can do that. Okay. So, um, let's let's do something here. Let's let's kick some demographics around from last night. Okay. This is an election that was ugly and close. Uh, Everybody was a little reluctant to start declaring winners last night so quickly because we know from years past the lessons learned. Uh, but it's clear that there's a loser. Uh, the very notion 
that the United States of America is that loser, uh, regardless of yeah. who won. Uh, but we have populations and geographies in this country that barely seem to belong in the same country, if on the same planet at all. And, and our electorate is so divided that many states went for either Trump or Hillary by lopsided margins. Uh, you know, like the Northeast was solidly blue, with Clinton winning New York, Massachusetts, Vermont, uh, with three-fifths of the vote or more. Uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, is heavily black, and the seat of the bureaucracy and pundit class delivered an almost Soviet-style 93% of the vote to the left. Uh, on the other side were a series of states where uh, Trump won just as easily, including Tennessee and Kentucky with three-fifths of the vote, uh, West Virginia by a two-to-one, Alabama two-to-one, uh, two-plus to one. Uh, you know, it's, it's crazy. Uh, the, these numbers are higher than numbers that Romney attained in 2012. Uh, the rest of the map followed the usual patterns, uh, you know, the, the left dominated Illinois on the strength of Chicago uh, and the West Coast, while the Republicans held the South in the center of the country. Um, the revolt, though, came from middle America. And we are a nation of many economies, if we're nothing else, like we discussed earlier, Dan, what, what gets left in your wallet when the paycheck comes home? Uh, but those that produce real tangible things, food, fiber, energy, manufactured goods, went overwhelmingly for Trump. He won yeah, virtually it's... every state from Appalachia to the Rockies, with the exception of the heavily Hispanic Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico. Well, and, and I was very, very surprised because, you know, I'm in North Carolina and, and North Carolina was looking very blue for a while. But, yeah. you know, we're, we're, you talk about manufacturing. I mean, one of the biggest in, in the area I'm in, one of the biggest parts of our economy is, is Daimler, Freightliner. Yeah. I mean, Freightliner manufactures all their trucks here. And mm -hmm. I really think that all of the union workers went Trump. I just do. And I, I you know, it, it surprised me, though, because he's he's very anti NAFTA, which right. they depend on. Yes. But he keeps them working. Which is right. what they're counting on. Now, some of the biggest margins that Trump took, OK, were. Uh, what we would call the more carbon intensive states, uh, Ohio, Texas, Louisiana, Wyoming, Idaho, and West Virginia. He took 68% in West Virginia. Dude, that's a blue state normally. Yeah. He took 68% in a blue state. The it's energy industry could well be the biggest financial winner of this election. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, uh, Hillary coming out against coal oh. really screwed her up big oh, yeah. time. Yeah. And then she's telling people that, oh, don't worry, we're going to close the coal mines, but we'll retrain you to put you in some kind of tech job. You think that's what those people want? No, they, they, they you're talking about generations of families that have been mining coal. That's what they do. As well they should be. Right. They don't, it, it, people think, oh my God, how would you want to mine coal? These people, it's, it's, it's the industry I'm in. I mean, in the industry I'm in, the people are in it because it's what they do. I mean, coal miners mine coal. That's what yes. they do. It's what they know. It's what they've done all their lives. And it's what their families have done. It, right. It, the, 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 the progressives want to say, how could you want to do that? We need to get you out of that. No, yeah, we, we want to do it. Leave us alone. Yeah, we know what's best for you. We need to shut this down and teach you a new trade. Right, and, and what, they do, what they don't understand is what it affects. I have 
one of the biggest steam plants on the East Coast right around the corner from my house. If you do away with coal, now my electric bills skyrocket because they have to refit that plant to use something else. Switchgrass. It's a huge, <laughs> yeah, it's a huge plant with, that employs probably 2,000, 3,000 people. There you go. There you so go. those people are all out of work now. So if you, you know, if you do yeah, away with coal. Absolutely. The other thing that he that he hammered on last night uh, were traditional manufacturing states, Ohio, Wisconsin. Uh, he, he didn't get Indiana, but he got Iowa uh, and Michigan, where, like you said, union voters did not come out and support Hillary like they did for Obama. And trade no, was and, also and on. The if line. you listen, um, if you listened to mainstream media leading up to this, it was you know the the Teamsters, the UAW, everybody. They were oh, all in Clinton's pocket. They weren't. Maybe the leadership was, but the workers weren't. That's it. Yeah. And you know the. Oh. God, what was I going to say? I just had something on the tip of my tongue, and I've lost it now. Um, <laughs> that happens when you're old, folks. You know, it just happens. Uh, but, you know, I was shocked last night as I watched that map turning, you know, for as long as I stayed awake. I, I actually got back up very, very early in the morning, uh, even earlier than my normal 4.30, but um, <laughs> and I was watching the fallout, but... <laughs> Hey, you know, uh, but the other thing, too, uh, the the white voter came out this year. Yeah, you know, they were they were talking about, oh, I know what I had on my mind. I was going to. Uh, hey, you know, I just thought of something. Hey, let's start a topic and then change gears. OK, so uh, <laughs> I heard a comment. You know, we're talking about mainstream media. I heard a comment made of all people. Of all people, Rachel Maddow said this. If you've learned nothing else this year, learn not to trust the mainstream media. Wow. How about that? You know what? That may be the first thing she has ever uttered that I agree with. I know. It's one of the reasons why I like KLR and radio. We are not mainstream, and you have two minutes, G. Dang right. So anyway, you combine that with uh, Mika Brzezinski on Morning Joe the other day talking about, you know, when everybody was going ape over, how can you believe WikiLeaks and blah, 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 blah. And she said, you know what? Maybe we just nominated a disgusting candidate. Yeah. I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> I mean, and, and to be honest with you, I, I, I I've been saying it for months. We both sides did. Yes, both sides did. Worst and and ever. the the you know the the vote came down to who do you think is the least disgusting? That's what the vote came down to. Um, I, I just. <laughs> It, it it floors me. And and I know we're we're really short on time. Having been for the last thirteen years sort of a libertarian, I've been an independent, but the the libertarians screwed it up too. I mean yeah. they had a constitutionalist that they could have put out there. Austin, yeah. And they screwed it up. He's yep. disgusted. I mean, I he he had no problem tweeting out stuff like if Weld said something stupid, he'd be like, what is this guy talking about? You know, he didn't <laughs> totally get behind them, you yeah. know? And, and, and I, I, I thought that was great. He, he kind of doesn't even really call himself a libertarian anymore. I'm going to butt in here for just two seconds. Uh, I actually did an interview with him after he lost the nomination. He actually gave me an interview after he lost Wow. And said he was he was going to work on down ballot and gave name two 
uh, candidates. The only one I can remember off the top of my head was Lily Tang Williams. I don't remember the other one off the top of my head. His support. And that's all he supported openly and definitely backed. I've got the audio somewhere, but I don't have it queued up, and that's for sure. Oh, that's okay. We're so tight on time, it wouldn't wouldn't have time to spool her anyway, would we? I was just about to tell you, it's a wrap, G. All right, folks. Well, that is this week's show. I am so sorry that we were as late as we were. Uh, I hope you were able to stay with us. Uh, no show next week. It'll be a best of, uh, yours truly is getting ready for a big Spartan race, uh, that week. So say a prayer and I'll see you in two weeks. Thanks Dan for showing up. Thanks Jesse for producing. Appreciate it immensely. And everybody out there, God bless you. We'll see you in two weeks. This is Rio of Madison Rising. And you're listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. We, we need to be in there every way. We built this country called the USA. And we fly our flag because we're proud and free. We're Americans. Red, white, and blue is our way of life. We never back down from a challenge or a fight. Nature provides, God gives the rights. We're Americans. the waters and we hunt the lands we forge the steel with our own two hands with what we've got we do the best we can we're americans it's time now for the conservative curmudgeon radio show on k98 talk now here's grouchy